We've been looking at exponentials and then logarithms, and now we're going to dive into natural logarithms. And natural logarithms have the same properties as our regular logarithms, but they go with this base e. And this base e is kind of like pi, where it's already a set number, and your calculator has a button that has an e on it. And just any time we use this base e, we're going to switch over to what we call the natural logarithm. Right, so e to the x is modeling continuous exponential growth, and then e to the negative x is decay. All right, um, and we just use this natural log as the opposite of e, just like our logarithm is the opposite of exponential. All right, so here we have e to the x and the natural log to the x. You can see how they look like inverse functions, and then here e to the negative x and negative natural log of x. All right, on your calculator. Off to the left, just like we have the log button, right below that we have our natural log button. So you type it in just like you would log of 4. We have natural log of 4, and we get 1.386. All right, if we press the second button and then natural log, that brings us to the E. So like if I type in E to the first power, there's regular old E. And then I can type in E to the fifth power, and 148.4. All right, so to get to all the buttons we're going to use in this video, we have either natural log or second natural log to get to the E. All right, so I want to write an equivalent, equivalent logarithmic equation for E to the X equals 23. So I'm going to do that the same way we've been doing it. So E to the X equals 23. Always start with your base, and we're going to go around the world and come back. So normally we would say log, right? So log base E of 23 equals x. But anytime we have log base e, that's when we switch to just natural log. So here I would say natural log of 23 equals x. And just like whenever I have a log, uh, like log base 4, or sorry, log of 4, my base is 10 if there's nothing written there. For natural log, we don't have to write anything there because it's automatically assumed that that's an e. So it's natural log base e of 23 equals x. Now we have e to the fourth equals x. So again, start with your base. Because my base is e, I'm just going to go straight to natural log of x equals 4. All right, and now I have natural log of x is about, remember your little squiggle equals means about approximately 1.2528. So we start with the base, which is an e anytime it's natural log. So we have e to the 1.2528 equals x. And then this thing I can type into my calculator. Press the second natural log button to the 1.2528 and figure out what x is. Alright, so then we have natural log 25 is approximately x. Start with your base, which is e to the x equals 25. Same rules as logarithms. All right, so I want to write this as a single algorithm. So I'm going to take this uh, 4 times the natural log of 3 plus natural log of 6 and write it as one natural log. Well, addition means multiplication. But before I multiply, I need to get this 4 back inside as my exponent, just like we do with logs. So this one becomes natural log of 3 to the 4th plus natural log of 6. And 3 to the 4th is 81. And now I'm going to multiply 81 and 6, and that's going to give us 486. So natural log of 486. Again, I'm adding, so I'm going to multiply all of these. But before I do, I'm going to move that 2 back in. So natural log of 3 squared plus natural log of 4 plus natural log of y. 3 squared is 9. 9 times 4 is 36, and 36 times y is just 36y. So natural log of 36y. And this is the same if you put it in parentheses. It's just another way of kind of separating it from anything else. All right, now I want to solve this equation. So I've got 3 times e to the negative 2x plus 4 equals 10. Just like when we solve log equations, you can't take a log or a natural log until you get it down to just e to the exponent. So I'm going to start by subtracting 4. So 3 times e to the negative 2x equals 6. Then divide by 3. So e to the negative 2x equals 2. 
So now to cancel out my e, I'm going to take a natural log of both sides. So I have natural log of e to the negative 2x equals natural log of 2. And then my rule says that I can take my exponent and put it out front. So I have negative 2x times natural log of e equals natural log of 2. All right? And just like with logarithms, anytime you had, uh, we talked about this in class, our rule, if I have log base 2 of 2, that just cancels to 1. Same thing here. So anytime we have natural log of e, it cancels because that's natural log base e of e. So it cancels out to just 1. So I get negative 2x equals natural log of 2. And I actually divide by negative 2. All right, so go into the calculator. And we're going to take natural log of 2 divided by negative 2. And we get negative 0 0.3466. Right? Just like solving a logarithm, except instead of taking a log, we're going to take a natural log. All right, so now I've got 2 times the natural log of 5x equals 6. Okay, because I have an, a variable in my natural log, I'm going to have to transform this to an exponential or an, a base e equation. But before I do that, I have to get rid of this 2 out front. So I have two options. One, I can move it back in. Or I can go ahead and divide now, and I see that 6 is divisible by 2. So I'm just going to divide both sides by 2. That way it goes away, and then I don't have to worry about any exponents. All right, so then I start with my base. So e to the third equals 5x. And then to get x by itself, we divide by 5. So then in the calculator, we're going to go second natural log to the third, close that parentheses, and then divide it by 5. So we get 4.0171. Alright, then I want to solve the inequality. And this goes back to the same property of logs. Alright, eventually I'm going to be able to take this and write a separate equation without um, the natural log. But first, I want to do something about this exponent. It's kind of going to be in the way. So I know that I can take and put it out front. And then I can divide 8 by 2 nicely, so I'm going to go ahead and just move it over. So we get the natural log of 3x plus 1 is greater than 4. All right, now if you recall with, with logarithms, if it's greater than, I can leave it as greater than. And then if it's less than, I have to put it between 0 and whatever your number is. All right, so for natural logs, it's greater than. So same thing, I'm going to leave it as greater than. And I'm going to go ahead and write it in my uh, exponential form. So I start with my base go around the world, come back. So e to the fourth is on one side, and 3x plus 1 is on the other. But I'm not going to keep it greater than yet, right? Because my exponent has to be on the other side of my greater than. So I'm just going to switch these, say 3x plus 1 is greater than e to the fourth. Your exponential always has to be on the other side. Whatever's in your log or natural log, it's got to be greater than whatever's on the other side. All right, then I just want to solve for x. From e to the fourth, that's a number. So I'm just going to subtract 1 from that number. So then we get 3x is greater than e to the fourth minus 1 and then divide by 3. So in my calculator I'm going to go second natural log e to the fourth minus 1. I'm going to go ahead and press enter just so I don't have to worry about parentheses and then divide that by 3. So we get 17.8661. So x is greater than 17.8661. Okay, we also have some interest problems with using base e. So if we talk about continuously compounded interest, we're going to use this formula, the PERT formula. A equals PE to the RT. Right? A is still our final amount. P is still our principal or our initial amount, however much we start with. R is your rate as a decimal. And then T is your time. All right, same letters, except now we just have that base E in there. So A equals PERT. 
So for the first example, suppose you deposit $700 into an account that has 3% annual interest compounded continuously. That's how you know you use PERP, is if it's continuous. And I want to the balance after 8 years. Alright, so that's $700. That's my initial amount. So we got 700 times E. 3% as a decimal is 0 0.03. And then my time is 8 years. So we just type this into the calculator. All right, so we've got 700 second natural log and 0 0.03 times 8. I'm going to make sure that's all in my parentheses so it knows it's all in the exponent. And we get 889.87. All right, now we have that same setup where we have $700 into an account with 3% interest compounded continuously, so I'm going to be using PERT. But now I'm looking for how long. How long it means time, so I'm looking for how long it takes for the balance to reach 1,200. So I must put in my 700E to the point zero three t because I'm looking for time now. I'm going to set this equal to 1,200. All right, now I'm going to solve this uh, base E equation. So eventually I'm going to take a natural log of both sides. But before I do that, I'm going to divide by 700. All right, my zeros cancel. I'm going to leave it as 12 over 7 because that's going to be um, an ugly decimal to work with. And I'd be rounding really early. So I'm going to leave that as 12 over 7 equals E to the point zero three t Take my natural log of both sides. All right, my exponent can go out in front. And then natural log of E goes away. So to get T by itself, I just need to divide by 0 0.03. So go to my calculator. Let's scoot it on this side. We've got natural log of 12 divided by 7. Close that parentheses. Divided by 0 0.03. So we get 17.97 years. Okay, natural log is just like a logarithm, except we use it whenever we're working with the base E. But all of our rules and properties still apply, and then we have our new uh, continuous, continuously compounded formula where A equals PE to the RT, our PERT formula.